Hi, this is Dr. Rick Goodman, leadership and employee engagement expert and author of the book, The Solutions Oriented Leader. Today we're going to discuss how leaders can boost employee engagement. There are a few different ways. First, you want to align the workforce. Make sure the members of your team need to be working toward the same thing, headed in the same direction. But how can they do this if they don't have any sense of where the company is headed or what you're all trying to achieve? As a leader, it falls to you to articulate a clear sense of mission and to make plain how every project, every task, and every employee contributes to that mission. Next, you want to empower your managers. Those who are in a direct or managerial role interacting with employees daily are the ones you need to invest in first. Develop their skills of engagement and empowerment. Provide them with direction and how they can listen, set clear expectations, and deliver feedback that is truly constructive and make sure the managers are all on the same page about employee engagement. Next, you've got to emphasize fairness. You can't afford to have employees disenfranchised because they think you're playing favorites. In everything you do from resource allocation to how you make sales, make sure you're applying principles of fairness. And you want to create leaders, solutions-oriented leaders. Don't settle for employees who do an efficient job every day. Invest in promising talents and encourage them in leadership development. Help them develop the skills of engaging and motivating other employees and provide opportunities for them to prove themselves. And of course, you've got to measure. You've got to know where you're going and where you've been. As the leader of your team, one of the most important responsibilities is measuring results. And that includes the results of engagement efforts. Use surveys and other employee feedback programs to benchmark your progress. You're a true believer in the power and importance of employee engagement, but the same can't be said of just about everyone. There may be members of your own C-suite or management team who still don't really understand what employee engagement is or why it matters. So before embarking on any kind of employee engagement initiative, you'll need to persuade them that it's good for the bottom line. How do we prove the value of employee engagement? Organizations with high employee engagement were more resilient and able to weather the many challenges that came with a pandemic and economic collapse and social unrest. Employee quit rates are now reaching record highs and the great resignation has not even peaked yet. Lastly, among actively disengaged workers, 74% are either actively looking for new employment or watching for openings. And as of April, 72% of U.S. white-collar workers were still working from home, compared with 14% of blue-collar workers. This means it matters more now than ever before to have an employee engagement plan that works for everybody. Employee engagement starts with good leadership. Many people know about the famous sign from President Harry S. Truman. He had it on his desk with the words, the buck stops here. What he meant, of course, was that he and he alone was responsible for everything going on in the White House beyond him. There was no one else to be held accountable. I think that's a good attitude for leaders at all levels of development. Everything that happens under the umbrella of your organization is a reflection on you and your leadership, and that includes employee engagement. To put it a little bit differently, employee engagement isn't about little workplace rewards or fun events, though those can be fine. Employee engagement springs out of your own leadership style. So if your employees aren't as engaged as you'd like them to be, the first thing to do is conduct a rigorous inventory of your own leadership approach. I'd like to share with you four ways leaders boost employee engagement quickly, so you can too. Start thinking about employee engagement early on, as in before the employee even starts work. As soon as you hire someone, start talking to them about mission, culture, and vision. Help them identify ways they can add their voice to the company. New hires tend to be enthusiastic, so try to harness that positive energy quickly. Next, provide a sense of meaning. I mentioned mission. I really believe that the key concept in employee engagement is to provide a sense of what your team is trying to accomplish, how it's trying to change the world, disrupt the industry, or have influence in clients' lives. Then show employees how they can contribute to that mission. Get outside the office. I also made a comment about fun events. While parties and get-togethers are fine, what really makes a difference is any event that gets employees out of the office and working together on a project, whether that's coordinating a fundraising run or building houses for those in need. Plan an event that will allow your employees to connect and to gel as a team outside your typical office. 
and prove that you're willing to roll up your sleeves and get in there with them and be involved and engaged as a leader. Prove your commitment to balance. Encourage your employees to take time for themselves, even if that just means getting them out of the office and home with their families on time each afternoon. Also, avoid sending after hours emails or texts and practice what you preach. Take some time for balance in your own life and always be example by leading. Today, I would like to discuss employee engagement versus employee experience. Is there a difference? An engaged employee is a satisfied employee, right? Well, not necessarily, though the terms employee engagement and employee satisfaction are sometimes used interchangeably. The truth is that they have vastly different meanings. So let's define employee engagement. This term describes employees who are committed to helping the business achieve its goals. Those employees who have an elevated level of engagement will come to work each day, ready to do their best work, even going above and beyond the call of duty to help achieve team objectives. Now let's look at employee satisfaction. Employee satisfaction looks a little bit different. Employees who are satisfied like to come to work each day and are happy with what they do, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're good at it. Certainly, there can be a lot of overlap, but an employee who arrives to work late each day without being penalized and spends half the day playing games on his phone might be perfectly satisfied, yet clearly not engaged. Is your employee doing time? This last example might be a little bit extreme, but the point is simply this. It's possible to have team members who are by no means unhappy with their workplace existence and whose contributions to your team are minimal. For selfish reasons, these employees are happy, but they do nothing to boost those around them, nor to advance your broader business goals. They are just doing time. There's a clear implication. Your company may put a lot of effort into making employees happy. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Maintaining high morale is crucial. Yet if you believe happy employees are always good employees, you may be missing some key issues with your workforce. Specifically, employees who are coasting rather than truly engaging. I would like to discuss with you why going beyond employee satisfaction makes a big difference. Are you meeting your team halfway or are you going the extra mile for them? The key difference is this. Employees who are merely satisfied will never go above and beyond for you. The question is, how can you take those merely satisfied employees and move them toward true engagement? There are many components to this, but one of the big ones is mission. Getting your employees to see that they are part of something bigger, to identify the business goals and their own role in achieving those goals is key. Employee emotions and its role in engagement is very important too. So to engage your employees in a meaningful way, it's wise to think in terms of emotions. As a leader, you must ask yourself, what are the emotional drivers for employee engagement? What I'm simply talking about, that employee engagement is often rooted in feelings. Feelings of being appreciated, of being wanted, of doing something meaningful, and of being part of something bigger. The bottom line, everyone wants love, appreciation, respect, like the food they eat, the air they breathe, and the water they drink. If you give them the love, appreciation, respect, the sky's the limit. Employee growth is the key to employee engagement, and here's why. Study after study confirms that when it comes to employee engagement, one of the critical factors is development. Employees need to feel like they have opportunities to gain experience, to broaden their horizons, to deepen their skill sets. To keep your employees engaged, offering these growth opportunities is essential, and here's why. When there's no room for growth, employees feel stagnant. There is a historic record for this. In 2010, surveys found that employee perception of company-sponsored growth opportunities was an all-time low across the board. And that makes sense given the high unemployment rate and the fact that many company training programs were being done away with. Opportunities for promotion, meanwhile, were dwindling. As a result, employee engagement numbers also plummeted. Employees across the country felt like they didn't really have any way to move onward and upward and their passion for work dropped because of it. Growth opportunities help everyone. By contrast, recent years have seen increased companies offering their employees chances to grow, educational opportunities, as well as wider on the job experience. It's not surprising that this motivates employees, especially younger ones who value career development more than any other workplace benefits, including salary. 
But growth opportunities aren't only good for the employees. They're also key for the company. They enhance the employer and their brand. By revealing that you really care about supporting your people in the long term, when it comes to recruiting top talents, this is exceedingly beneficial. And there's also an importance in investing in team members' growth opportunities, whether training or promotions or simply delegated responsibilities. Show them that you believe in the employee and have confidence in their ability to thrive. Make your employees see that they are your most important assets and you will also see your employee retention increase. Growth is a powerful way to accomplish all of that and all you must do is invest in your team leaders. It might boost your employee engagement also. I'd like to share with you four ways leaders boost employee engagement quickly so you can too. Start thinking about employee engagement early on, as in before the employee even starts work. As soon as you hire someone, start talking to them about mission, culture, and vision. Help them identify ways they can add their voice to the company. New hires tend to be enthusiastic, so try to harness that positive energy quickly. Next, provide a sense of meaning. I mentioned mission. I really believe that the key concept in employee engagement is to provide a sense of what your team is trying to accomplish, how it's trying to change the world, disrupt the industry, or have influence in clients' lives. Then show employees how they can contribute to that mission. Get outside the office. I also made a comment about fun events. While parties and get-togethers are fine, what really makes a difference is any event that gets employees out of the office and working together on a project, whether that's coordinating a fundraising run or building houses for those in need. Plan an event that will allow your employees to connect and to gel as a team outside your typical office and prove that you're willing to roll up your sleeves and get in there with them and be involved and engaged as a leader. Prove your commitment to balance. Encourage your employees to take time for themselves, even if that just means getting them out of the office and home with their families on time each afternoon. Also, avoid sending after hours emails or texts and practice what you preach. Take some time for balance in your own life and always be example by leading. Every leader wants to see their employees engaged, truly locked into the work they're doing. What some leaders forget is that engagement starts with them. As a leader, your style and approach can either make or break employee engagement. Here are four ways leadership lapses can jeopardize employee engagement. The first is no sense of goals or mission. Your employees want to feel like they're part of something bigger. They want to have a clear sense of what the company is trying to achieve and how their own role furthers those objectives. Are you consistently grounding your leadership style in the big picture? Or do you get so swept up in the day-to-day -day that you neglect to connect employees to that broader mission? Forgetting that you set the tone. If you're constantly working long hours, staying in your office until late into the evening, or sending a lot of after-hours emails and texts, that sends a clear signal to your employees that they too need to be putting in long hours at the expense of their family life. That's a recipe for burnout and for poor engagement. Remember that you lead by example, for better or worse. Not allowing employees to be heard. Do your employees feel like they can offer ideas or feedback without being judged? It's vital for your employees to know that you care about their opinions. That doesn't mean you have to act on them, just that you should provide a channel for employee input. Failing to measure employee engagement. We live in a world where data and analytics are easily accessible, and that includes data on your employee engagement. Are you sending out surveys? Are you looking at the numbers? Are you using data to plan for ongoing improvement? Leaders work with your HR team to ensure that you're taking a methodical and data-driven approach to employee engagement. All businesses strive to engage their employees, but some face particular challenges. For smaller companies where budgets are more restrictive, it can be tough to know just what you can do to keep your workforce committed and motivated. But you don't have to have big company resources to keep your team members engaged. Here are a few employee engagement methods that can work well even in the smallest of businesses. Customize your incentives. Your company benefits package might include any number of incentives, but it's important to remember that there's no one-size-fits-all solution here. Instead of spending money on standard incentives that only some of your employees want, provide some custom options. Your older employees are more interested in enhanced health care benefits, 
while younger ones find greater appeal in travel opportunities, gift cards, or educational opportunities. Incentives really work best and offer the most bang for the buck when you tailor them to your employees. That's something any company can do, including the small company or the growing company. Give your employees a voice. Another way to boost employee engagement. Help your team members to feel like they truly have a voice within your company. Make sure you hold brainstorming sessions where all ideas are respected. Provide different channels for employees to provide their feedback. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to act on every single idea that comes your way. Just listen and make sure your employees know that you value their perspective. Create a sense of mission. Here's a way to really boost engagement without spending a dime. Help your employees to understand that they are part of something bigger than themselves. Articulate your company's mission and short and long-term objectives. Get buy-in from your team members and ask for their feedback. Most importantly, clarify the ways in which each employee in each role contributes to the big picture. Bottom line, show your team members that what they do matters very much to the big picture. There are three things that sabotage employee engagement that I'd like to share with you so that you're aware of them. There's nothing in your company culture that doesn't have an impact on employee engagement and retention. Every ritual, every rule, every practice affects employee engagement and retention in some way, whether for good or for bad. As such, even team leaders who have the best intentions can inadvertently undercut their own attempts to keep employees motivated. Here are three of the most common forms of self-sabotage. The first is micromanaging your employees. You hired your team members for a reason, because you believe in them and trust them to do an excellent job. Your employees need to be reminded of this. They need to have you affirm it to them both inward and in action. But when you delegate something to them and then lean over their shoulder, not allowing them the freedom to accomplish anything on their own terms, you undermine that message. In doing so, you can sabotage employee confidence. Simply put, you must trust people, and if you don't, you shouldn't have hired them in the first place. The next, blaming your employees. Everyone makes mistakes. In fact, that's one of the main ways in which we grow. But if you jump on your employees for every little error, casting blame rather than offering support, you suppress that potential. There is a time and a place for constructive criticism. If blame is all you offer, don't be shocked when employee engagement tanks. And lastly, not giving your employees enough credit. Your team should rise and fall together. You share victories as well as defeats. And if the team accomplishes something, everyone should feel good about it. Don't take all the credit for yourself. Don't deprive your employees of the affirmation they deserve after a job well done. Make sure everyone feels included in your company's broader sense of mission and in the achievement of key objectives. Employee engagement should emanate from all corners of your company. This starts by recognizing the areas where you're coming up short. If you're aware of these problems in your company, take action against them today. I hope you enjoyed this short lesson. I want to thank you for tuning in to our channel. And always remember, we get paid for solutions and results. So keep making it happen. And sharing is caring. To learn more about solutions-oriented leadership, please visit our website at rickgoodman.com. Or feel free to email me at info at rickgoodman.com. And please subscribe to the Solutions Oriented Leader on iTunes or your favorite podcast app to get your weekly episodes automatically.